Welcome to Dynamics of Personality. I'm Dora Clark Pine. I'll be your instructor, your professor for this course. I'm just going to go over a couple things in this introductory video, and um, that's the syllabus and the paper. There's, there's another um, video clip about APA format, so I'm not going to go over the APA format on the paper, but just the content itself. But uh, before I do that, let me just quickly go over the syllabus. There are basically four things to, to keep in mind for the syllabus. The discussion items, which are based on um, the content modules, which you can find on Blackboard under uh, content. Yeah, You would look for uh, the content modules. There'll be several uh, theorists highlighted. I decided to take a few theorists out of the textbook and kind of do my own research and get as much information on them as I possibly could, put it together for you to read, and then answer a few questions about uh, some of these individuals. Now there are six six content modules, and you can uh, pick four, pick four of the six. So, so uh, I think the theorists I, I chose were Freud, um, Sigmund Freud, Carl Jung, Alfred Adler, uh, Karen Horney, uh, Carl Rogers, and B.F. Skinner. I thought they were probably the most interesting um, set of individuals from the entire textbook. So hopefully you'll enjoy the reading. Um, in terms of the discussion items, they're kind of all or nothing. You, you, you answer the questions, submit uh, the answers, and you get full credit if you turn it in on time. And uh, you should, uh, on the syllabus, have some sort of time schedule in terms of what week of the session these things would be due. Uh, so it's kind of all or nothing. Uh, if you stay on track, you should get full credit. Now, I will correct those, those discussions like I would anything that would be submitted in terms of APA format, but those corrections won't count against you. They're kind of, in a sense, they're free of charge. Uh, when it comes down to the paper, however, uh, hopefully you've generalized the corrections to the point where you've made adjustments on the paper. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. Anyway, I hope that that does make sense and, and it is helpful to you. So for, for discussion items, there's also a midterm slash final. Now the nice thing uh, about uh, these exams is there's only two. You'll have study guides to help prepare you for uh, the, the exams in and of themselves. And you can drop the lowest of the two scores. So um, that hopefully will be a, a cost-effective time saver for you as you prep for the exams. Uh, they'll be drawn from the textbook of the course. And I'm using an older textbook uh, because I find with uh, personality uh, theories especially that the information doesn't change over time. So hopefully this saves you a few dollars and you still have access to the same information that you would get in a later edition. I will just change a few things here or there, call it a newer edition and, and charge you a whole lot of money. I, I just don't see any use of that. So it's the eighth edition that you'll be using. Um, and again, you have study guides to help prep you. Um, the tests are timed, so study for the exams, and I'm trusting you, um, trusting your integrity, that you won't access notes or your textbook as you take these exams. Again, you can drop the lowest of the two scores. I think that's, that's fair. Um, so, so, you know, be honest. Do the right thing. All right, no one's looking over your shoulder, but, you know, do the right thing. All righty, so the other two big things is uh, the presentation. And here you're going to do a presentation uh, using either PowerPoint or Keynote. You're going to do it on one of five personality disorders uh, from the DSM-4. I'll talk about the DSM-4 in a bit. Uh, the, the five you can choose from, um, a couple come from cluster A. One is paranoid, one is uh, schizotypal. You can choose 
one of those two disorders or from cluster B, you can choose antisocial or borderline. And I didn't pick anything from cluster C. They're kind of a little boring. Uh, I went back to the back of the DSM-4 manual and I picked a personality disorder. It used to be one of the major personality disorders. Now it's been moved into a section that says it kind of requires a little more time for research and and, and study, but it's called passive aggressive personality disorder. I thought you might have fun with that one, so I put that one on the list. Uh, the other personality disorders, uh, I'll be covering narcissistic personality disorder, and in your content module readings, you'll, you'll be kind of looking at some of the things that are involved with uh, the other disorders. So I think that that should uh, kind of cover things pretty well. In this class, uh, you know, we're going to uh, talk a little bit or actually spend most of our time talking about personality disorders because I think most of you understand what it takes as, as parents or potentially becoming parents down the road, what it would probably take to be effective parents, uh, things that would uh, create the chance of adaptive personality dynamics to come into play, um, things like consistent discipline, uh, nurturing uh, behavior, affirming, validating behavior, drawing a distinction between the child and his or her behavior as you hold them accountable in terms of what they're, they're doing in terms of maladaptive behavior. And when you're disciplining a child, like I have a little Pomeranian, Pomeranian over here who's being a little feisty right now, sometimes just a look will will kind of set them on the right track. Uh, and, and with kids, you kind of have to choose the the lowest level of discipline that's effective. I think that's that's a nice rule to, to live by. So sometimes just a look will will help a child to calm down and to readjust his or her behavior. Um, sometimes you have to do something else like uh, maybe uh, take away a privilege here or there, but but I uh, want you to always try to do it. In, uh, in a non-angry state. Otherwise, you're, you're modeling inconsistencies with that process. You're modeling, this is what you do when you're frustrated, you get mad, which is not what we want. So most of us understand some of the positive things that we need to do with children uh, if, we want to, uh, if we want to raise children who are um, good citizens. You know, you want to pay attention especially when they're doing productive things. Uh, you know, a lot of times, maybe parents, when they're tired, they might see a child playing constructively in the corner, maybe coloring a coloring book or something like that, and they say to themselves, hey, I've got some time free. <laughs> I'll go take a warm bath and just unwind. Well, that's a wonderful opportunity to go over and pay attention to the child and, and let him or her know, hey, you're being very quiet. I appreciate that. That's, that's pretty neat. Good job. Uh, I'll be right back. I have to do a couple things, but I'll be right back. Thank you for doing that. Whenever they do anything positive, you know, verbalize that you've seen it. Uh, verbalize what you've seen that is positive. Connect the dots in their mind. Um, you know, sometimes people will use token systems. Those can be very good systems to use. Eventually, you want to wean them off the token system so that uh, the behavior is less externally driven and more internally driven. Uh, so it moves from the extrinsic to intrinsic behaviors. Um, so so there's, there's a lot of things that we can do that are very uh, healthy and adaptive. And, and, and parenting intelligently is, is what I like to call it. Um, those are some nice things to do. But we're going to spend the majority of our time looking at abnormal behavior when things go wrong. You know, what can happen in terms of personality development. So um, I have a cat here on my keyboard. Ooh, ooh, Miss Chelsea. Thank you. There you go. All right. So <laughs> she kept moving the pages, so I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, no, let me, uh, there we go. All right. Sorry about that. Good timing on her end. <laughs> As you can see, I'm at home. And so this is 
This is all kind of ad-libbed. The animals won't always play the roles they're supposed to play. All right. Um, anyway, the the other uh, big thing is is the presentation. Again, like I said, you can choose one of five disorders, and I will model for you narcissistic personality disorder. What I want you to try to do your best with is keeping the bullets on whatever program you use brief and to the point. Uh, I've been to a lot of presentations, a lot of conferences, seminars, and that sort of thing, where people, uh, well, even student presentations, so they'll read the slide word for word, and they'll have a whole paragraph there. And, you know, you, you, you're reading it faster than what they're reading it, and to them it's just, you know, kind of words. And to be honest, it's it's somewhat boring, you know. Uh, I want you to keep your bullet short and sweet where you just ad-lib like I'm doing right now so that hopefully you keep it more interesting, more entertaining. Uh, you become an expert at whatever it is that you're talking about so that all you need is just a little prompt to get you going. If the bullet isn't self-explanatory, then in your notes section, you know, give me a little more definition or a little more explanation uh, regarding that construct that you have that you're talking about in terms of your bullet. If you're going to do an activity, um, some sort of uh, skit or role play or uh, interaction with the class, if you were doing this live, describe it in your notes section again uh, with either Keynote or, or PowerPoint. Uh, that way I will kind of almost get a real feel for what it would have been like had you had done uh, the slide presentation live. If you're going to show a little video clip from YouTube or whatever, you just give me the link so I can I can look it up and, and see. So it'll make it interesting for me. So that's a little selfish on my end, but hopefully I'll learn something uh, from the process too. And that'll make it fun. So uh, presentation, what you're going to do with this presentation is, and uh, now I'm going to have to turn to my notes, uh, you're going to describe the personality disorder, you know, the definition from the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the fourth edition, which we're at right now. Just a brief uh, definition and talk a little bit about the criteria. If you can come up with a snappy uh, mnemonic or abbreviation, acronym for for the uh, criteria, that would be great. Uh, I'll do that with narcissistic personality disorder, so, so uh, you'll see what I mean. Uh, you'll talk a little bit about the etiology, which is what creates this personality disorder. Um, some of the contributing variables to the process. Uh, you'll talk a little bit about demographics. Do we, when, you know, do we see this uh, primarily in females and males? Uh, what does the literature say, the research say? Um, ethnicity, if there are an, any ethnic variables, you might talk a little bit about that. Uh, you'll want to talk about two other things, prevention strategies. How would you go about preventing these conditions from emerging, and and uh, and then, if you can't prevent it, how would you intervene? What what would be some of the intervention strategies that are evidence based that you would attempt to use if a person would come in with the, uh, this particular personality disorder that you're describing? And then a little summary at the very end to tie everything all together, and uh, short and sweet. And, and again, in your notes section, talk a little bit about at least one activity, one activity that kind of brings the, a group in, you know, to, to kind of digest the material more effectively. Uh, so in a sense, you're, you're kind of attacking this with the idea that this is a live presentation, even though it isn't. You know, it's just a slide presentation that I'm going to look at. But, but help me see through your eyes how this would unfold in a live situation. That would be, that would be wonderful. Um, you know, 
do your proofreading check, your spell check, so there are things not misspelled in your, your keynote or uh, PowerPoint presentation, and uh, provide some references at the end. That would be great.